Hey everybody, we're back here and today we're talking about solving a trinomial, a quadratic trinomial with a leading coefficient other than one. So if there's x squared plus bx plus c, but there's something out in front of that x squared other than just one. So just to uh, jump into this, let's take a look at these two warm-up problems here. These are ones you should be able to do already and, and just to, to refresh you on these things. So you see why we need this new method. So part A, if we have a quadratic, we want to solve this by making it equal to zero. So bring everything to one side. So just subtract that 48. Hopefully this is nothing new. It should be autopilot here. We're going to put this in standard form. So put that constant right on the end. x squared minus 13x minus 48 equals zero. Now we're going to try to solve this by factoring. It, there's no GCF, it's a trinomial. It starts with x squared. I'm gonna unfoil this, x and x, and I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to be negative 48 and add up to negative 13. So you can take a minute and think about that, but it's gonna be negative 16 and positive three. Negative 16 and positive three. And therefore, when you set each factor equal to zero, you're going to get solutions of positive 16 and negative 3. Okay. Part B is already equal to zero, uh, but this is not a trinomial. This is just a binomial here. And when it comes to factoring this sort of one, I can take out a greatest common factor first. So, and that would be only x in this case. So taking x out will leave you with 15x plus one on the inside. And setting each factor equal to zero will leave you with x equals zero. There's one solution. And 15x plus one equals zero. Subtract one, divide by 15. You'll have x equals negative 1 15th. <clears throat> so two old problems here, um, but just good to see both of those so that now when you encounter this, you kind of have a sense of what you've done before and why you need a new method. So this is a quadratic. It's not equal to zero. So step one, I'm going to bring that over. So subtract two from each side, and now you've got that. And now we're going to try to factor this. Again, this is what we've been working on the last couple days. Hopefully you're feeling a little bit better with it. If there's something out in front other than one, you want to first try to take out a greatest common factor. And there's nothing there that I can take out other than one. And now this is where we're going to try to use the AC method. Remember, if it's just x squared, that's where you can really just move to this x and x, you know, unfoil approach. But if it's 15x squared, this is where you've got to either you know, try the guessing and checking method of trying to come up with the right combination or just use the AC method. So the AC method here, remember the idea is here's A, here's C, and here's B, of course. AC is the first step, 15 times negative 2. The first coefficient times the last gives you negative 30. And then the big goal here is to try to find two numbers that multiply to that, negative 30, but add up to what's in the middle, which is in this case, positive one. And this you might you know, take you some thought, you, know, you go through your options of one and 30, you know, two and 15, three and 10. Uh, in this case, you want six and negative five, right? One of them has to be negative, and in this case, the, the bigger one's gotta be the positive one. So six and negative five are the two numbers, but remember what we do with them is you keep the first and last term the same. You're just gonna rewrite this positive x in the middle using those two numbers. So I'm gonna rewrite, instead of positive x, I'm going to write plus six x minus five x. So using those two numbers, plus six x minus five x adds up to x. And then I'm going to factor by grouping. So factoring a GCF out of this, you can take out 3x. Then you'll have 5x plus 2. 
out of this, the only thing I can take out is 1 or negative 1. And in this case, I want to take out negative 1. And remember, that will switch the sign of this when you factor out a negative. So you'll have negative 1 times 5x plus 2, which is what you wanted. So now you can factor out that common factor, 5x plus 2, whether you put it at the back or out in front. And the other factor is made up of these coefficients, 3x minus 1. Hopefully you're getting better with that procedure. <clears throat> Remember, if you want to double check that you factored it correctly, you could just take a minute and foil this out and make sure you get this. It really doesn't take that long. But we have factored this correctly. And now we set each factor equal to 0, the same as we've always done. It's just we used a new method to get to this point. So setting this factor equal to 0, subtract 2, divide by 5, x is equal to negative 2 fifths. This one, add 1, divide by 3, x is equal to positive 1 third. Done. And there are your two solutions. If you really wanted, you could plug these back into the beginning and they would make a true statement if you want to double check with your calculator. Okay, so part two of this, we're just going to revisit and put some different ideas together with, with our graphing knowledge. This is the graph of negative 4x squared minus 6x plus 70. Hopefully you recognize that is a parabola and it's opening downward because the a value is negative. And we're just going to find a lot of the same stuff we've always found and uh, just kind of review and maybe throw some new twists in here. First thing we ask for, the y-intercept. Now you can see on the graph, here's where it hits the y-axis. It's somewhere between 60 and 80, uh, but I really I'm just providing this to, to give you a visual. You should know how to get it just from the graph, and that is, of course, plugging in 0 for x, right? In order to be on the y-axis, x has to be 0. So plug 0 in for x, and these parts become 0, and you're left with 70 that constant on the end. Remember, if it's in standard form, that is your y-intercept really every time. So you could really do this without showing any work, I guess. So we get 70. That's the y-intercept. Or 0, 70, if you want to answer as an ordered pair. Finding the zeros. Zeros are another word for x-intercepts, or the roots of the equation. And we can see there are two places where we hit the x-axis. And that means we put in 0 for y. Or in other words, <clears throat> setting the entire equation equal to 0, which is just forcing us to solve this quadratic. Now, it, it, we're going to try to solve this by factoring. And keep in mind, I still always want to look for a greatest common factor, because if you'll notice, there is a greatest common factor I can take out of this. 4, 6, and 70 are all divisible by 2. So I'm definitely going to take out 2. And this is not necessary, but you might like to. If the leading coefficient's negative, maybe you want to take out negative 2. Maybe it's just nice to kind of get rid of that. But that is the, the GCF, either 2 or negative 2. If I take out negative 2, just keep in mind that's going to switch the signs of these things here. So that's going to be... 2x squared, and negative 2 times positive 3x gives you negative 6x, and negative 2 times negative 35 gives you positive 70. And when you factor that negative 2 out, that factor didn't contain any variables, so it's not going to really affect any solutions. It's, it's not going to have a solution of its own. So if you'd like, you could get rid of it, because just dividing both sides by negative 2, 0 divided by negative 2 is 0. The real solutions are going to come from this. And you see, it was nice to take out that GCF because now you've got smaller numbers to deal with, 2 and negative 35, and, and maybe that's going to make your combinations easier to come up with. But I still have to factor this trinomial, and it's still got a coefficient there that's not 1. So I'm still going to use the AC method here. So AC is. 2 times negative 35, and that gives me negative 70. Are there two numbers that multiply to negative 70 but add up to positive 3? I mean, you have to think about that sometimes. I know some people are faster at this than others. But that's going to be positive 10 
and negative 7. So that's the combination we're looking for. So again, remember this step. I'm going to rewrite the middle term when we do this AC method. You do A times C. Then you find those two magic numbers to rewrite in the middle. So instead of 3x, I'm going to write plus 10x minus 7x and leave that minus 35. Remember, this is the trinomial I'm focusing on, so I got rid of that negative 2. Now that you've made four terms, you factor by grouping. Hopefully this part kind of goes quickly now because you're masters of that. You can take out 2x, and then you'll have x plus 5. I can take out a 7 or a negative 7. In this case, I want to take out negative 7, and that's going to make x plus 5. Again, it's going to switch the sign of that when you factor a negative out. And then there's that common factor you're looking for. If you don't have that, you did something wrong. Factor out that x plus 5. 2x minus 7 is your other factor. Set each factor equal to 0 and solve. So we'll get x equals negative 5. Add 7 divided by 2. x equals positive 7 halves. Those are your two x-intercepts. And you can see, if you like, that on the graph, you know, I gave you the scale here. This is 7. This is smack dab halfway between 0 and 7. That's the 7 halves, or 3.5. This one is a little bit closer to negative 7, you can see. That's the negative 5. <clears throat> so we kind of had a sense that you should be getting one positive and one negative. Uh, and now, the vertex and axis of symmetry. This is an oldie, but still a goodie. Finding the vertex when it's in standard form here like this. I mean, I can see the vertex is, is right around here. I've got a sense of what it is. I could estimate, but remember the way we find that. We find the x-coordinate first by doing negative b over 2a. It's like a portion of that quadratic formula, just without the whole plus minus square root business. So for this original parabola, a, b, c are negative 4, negative 6, and 70. So negative b over 2a. So negative b is going to be negative negative 6, or positive 6, over 2 times a, which is negative 4. And we're going to have 6 over negative 8, which is negative 3 fourths. Or if you want to use a decimal, negative 0.75. And to find the y-coordinate, because the vertex is a point, I want the y-coordinate. Remember, we're just going to plug this value into the original function. Just plug it in. It's like just making a table. If you want to know what y is when x is negative 0.75, I'll plug it in. Plug it in, plug it in. Yeah, it's been a while since you've had to hear that. And you can do this by, you know, on your own. You can use a calculator to help you out negative 4, negative 0.75 squared minus 6 times negative 0.75 plus 70 <clears throat> gives you 72.25, 72 and a quarter. Or if you want to make a fraction out of that, it would be 289 fourths if you want the improper. But I'm fine using a decimal here because it's not rounded. And so your vertex is negative 0.75 comma 72.25. And we also asked for the axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry, if you'll remember, maybe it's been a while, the axis of symmetry is that vertical line that goes right down the middle, right? And it goes right down the middle, it passes right through that vertex, which is why they're, they're always related. So the axis of symmetry is x equals negative 0.75. It's the same x value as your vertex. And the last two things, the domain and the range. Domain is the set of all x values, and for this you can have any x value you want. It's all real numbers. Classic. The range, however, that's what you needed the vertex for. The very highest y value was 72.25. So all the y values are less than or equal to 72.25. That was an old question. Hopefully you still remember it. 
Okay, good luck. Let me know if you got any questions.